we obviously hear a lot these days about green hydrogen. Uh, curious if that's part of what you source today. Uh, is it in the your plans on the horizon? And and what does it really take to to transition to green hydrogen over what I assume is over time? But I, I realize there's a lot of nuance in in how that actually happens. A lot of talk about wanting it to happen sooner rather than later. And you have a, a bird's eye view on on kind of the benefits and and real barriers to that today. So I'm curious how you see the green aspect rolling out over time. Yeah, it's a, a complicated topic to tackle, uh, Pete, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to try to get into it with you here today. Um, so first of all, a lot of the hydrogen that we source uh, is green. And, and, I'll, and I'll caveat that by saying the definition of green is not precise, right? Um, it's, it's more of a marketing term. But I would say that we, um, the majority of our hydrogen comes from a, from renewable sources. We actually source it from uh, uh, renewable biogas. And then also I will say that um, we are certified by the state of California to have zero carbon impact on our entire hydrogen supply chain from the well to the wheels. Um, so so we, we sell uh, all uh, green hydrogen today with zero carbon impact. Um, but that's done, again, using renewable biogas. Um, when you look at scaling up the production of green hydrogen, a lot of folks look at electrolytic hydrogen uh, with renewable uh, electricity generation, right? So taking wind uh, or solar or geothermal and then using electrolyzers to basically split water into hydrogen. And, you know, that's a technology that has huge promise and scale uh, but has some both technology and cost hurdles to overcome in the near term. So, um, and I'll give you a few examples. You know, one thing is uh, electrolyzers are a key technology to enabling that, right? And um, today electrolyzers are, you know, not uh, probably produced at the scale and at the cost needed uh, to actually produce hy green hydrogen through electrolytic processes uh, at the cost that's needed. Another thing actually relates to policy, right? Because, uh, to actually put renewables into electrolyzers is not something that's typically done by, you know, utilities or through renewable generation of projects. So I think new policy needs to be looked at to say like, hey, instead of curtailing or throwing away good renewable electricity, how can we, you know, divert that to electrolyzers at a competitive cost, right? So there's a policy angle there as well. Um, overall, I think, you know, we'll get there on the green uh, hydrogen cost front. Uh, but it will take time and, you know, it will take efforts and subsidies uh, to get us to where we can scale and produce green hydrogen at a, at a low cost. And I, and I think just as a closing thought, you know, I think we have to be very careful to not let the perfect be the enemy of the good on this one, right? I mean, um, even producing hydrogen by very traditional methods, you get a big reduction in carbon, you know, compared to using gasoline or diesel. Uh, if you use things like renewable biogas, you can get the carbon intensity down to zero, right? Um, so I think there are very good near-term ways to achieve very good benefits, you know, without having to go to the electrolytic green right away. So we have to be smart about how we transition. It's a lot like how with electric vehicles today, you know, most of our grid is still powered by natural gas, right? And we know we can get to renewable in the future and we see that promise, right? But we're not forcing every electric vehicle to be powered by 100% renewable electricity today, right? So um, I think we have to you know, work on the promise of the future and get the near-term benefits optimized without letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. If I was a skeptic, I might say it's going to be easier to, uh, clean up the the power supply to electric vehicles than to scale green hydrogen. But uh, from a transportation perspective, I know you already hit on the fueling time being an advantage for, for hydrogen powered trucks. Uh, what other advantages do you see when you kind of compare these, these fledgling competitive technologies? Uh, you know, if, if I'm a truck OEM, or a truck operator, do I want a battery electric truck or do I want a hydrogen fuel cell truck? Uh, what other advantages do you see from, from your perspective for the latter? Well, I think, um, yeah, it's a great question, Pete. And I, I think from the consumer end is probably the first place that you need to look at it, right? Because at the end of the day, the consumer 
uh, or, or the customer needs to have an efficient process by which they can operate their business, right? And especially if you're looking at trucks, you know, good mo goods movement is a highly competitive uh, business that, you know, people are down to the penny on cost and trying to compete with each other. So, so you need a really good product. Um, so I think some of the advantages I already mentioned is you can get better payload with a hydrogen fuel cell truck because by the nature of a battery truck, you're carrying a lot of weight in battery, uh, right? That is going to offset some of the payload that you can carry. The fast fueling is really key as well. You know, even with very fast charging uh, on electric vehicles, it's still, you know, four or five times the amount of time that it requires to refuel a hydrogen vehicle today. And again, if you're in a highly competitive logistics business, that time is real money and, and, uh, and a real logistics issue. Um, and then uh, finally, the range is a really big one, right? So uh, it doesn't matter if you're going longer distances or shorter distances, the more often you have to stop to refuel, it again becomes a logistics uh, issue and a cost issue because of the amount of time that the driver is taking to refuel the vehicle. And I think the the other uh, issue, Pete, which is not one to be taken lightly, is you know the amount of throughput of vehicle refueling that you can put on a piece of property, right? If you look at the density of the number of trucks that go through a, a, a truck stop and the amount of space that it takes, if you had to charge the same number of vehicles, uh, uh, with electricity, you would need much larger real estate to start with. And the amount of power draw that you would need to go into that site starts to actually become, I don't want to say impossible because I don't like the word impossible, but logistically very challenging to get that kind of, you know, power, uh, into a, into a site that you would need to charge that number of trucks. So the, the scalability is very critical for hydrogen as well. If you're running a fleet or an operation. I was just going to ask you if there's almost a inverse relationship at play here where uh, it sounds like it might be expensive to get hydrogen up and running, but uh, but more cost efficient over larger scale. Uh, but on the battery electric truck side of things, uh, if you if you can charge a dozen trucks, you could probably do that. But if, if you have a fleet of a thousand trucks, it sounds like you're telling me that might be, uh, it actually might be more difficult to scale as as you get greater numbers uh, on the road. Yeah, I think that's right. And, and I would say that from my perspective, that's kind of true with hydrogen in general compared to electric charging. Um, in the beginning, it's very difficult for hydrogen to get over the initial hump because there's not a lot of existing infrastructure that we can leverage, right? But once you start to hit the scale, then it becomes a very self-sustaining prospect. With plug-in vehicles, I think the exercise has been very much the reverse, right? Initially, it's been easier to introduce the vehicles because there's a lot of existing infrastructure that can be leveraged. But as it scales, and now all of a sudden you start talking about adding generation, adding transmission to support these vehicles, uh, it becomes very difficult to actually keep up and hit that, that scale. And you mentioned before, you know the renewable grid uh, compared to green hydrogen, and I would and I would I would flag some similar things there, right? I mean, when you look at adding renewable uh, electricity onto a grid, to a certain point, it's quite doable. But when you start having to manage all of the intermittency for all the uses and complexities of the grid, it starts to become difficult to get those higher penetrations. And I I still haven't seen how that can be done. Uh, you know, I'm a an optimist, so I think we'll get there technologically. But with hydrogen, it's very easy to see how you can get to 100% renewable, right? Um, will it cost more initially? Yeah, it will, because there's not existing infrastructure we can leverage. But with scale, I mean, it's very easy how you, uh, to see how you can get to 100% renewable.